A volunteer organization and the importance of reflecting their stories and changing the African narrative in movies. Dr. Susie is here as a mother, as an intellectual, and as a woman. And uh, Jabril is here reflecting the views of an organization that shapes behavior when it comes to citizenship. So Emma, in one to two minutes, just a little bit about you and uh, your view on the Ghana movie industry. Hi everyone. Um, I think I've been introduced enough and uh, I would only say that uh, I see myself as a an artist by birth, not by choice, because I found myself doing a lot of art stuff at a very young age. So, yes, I probably came on earth to do something around art. One, two, one, two. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And um, what's my view about the Ghana movie industry? I think we are on our way, we are not there yet, but we started something good and I'm sure as the discussions go on, we'll delve more into some of the things that we have to do, but I think we are on a great start and basically, yeah, thank you. All right, Aparay. Okay. What does cinema mean to you? Thank you very much and good evening lovely people. I'm excited to be here and my two children are here, Monica and Junior. Thank you for coming to see what daddy does. Um, coming from CoAfrica, which is um, a voluntary organization, an NGO that works with young people, graduate young people to help change the African narrative around African philanthropy and Africans helping Africans and creating lasting impact. Personally, I'm a lover of film and movies, and I have always loved Ghana movies. I think it goes way back to, we used to call it what, Thursday Theater, then Akan Drama, and all of that. And I have seen great talent, and personally, I used to act when I was in um, secondary school in Presec, and all of that. So I've been somebody who likes to tell stories, and to bring stories to life. The Ghana movie industry, I think for me, has um, had, um, well, a roller coaster, that's how I would describe it. Sometimes doing extremely well, other times going through the dynamics of the times. But I generally feel that with all that is happening in recent times, there is hope for the future. Also, the stories that we tell are going to be competing with the AIs and all of that. That notwithstanding, there's still the place for telling authentic stories that address our unique developmental challenges that we have. And I think that we have an opportunity to tell our own stories, our own way, to our own audience first, before we send it abroad. And also making sure that these stories are so owned by us that there's no contention as to why we are making them. And as the conversation goes on, I'll be shedding some light on what we are doing with our volunteers in the communities who are creating lasting impacts with low cost yet high impact projects. Thank you. Thank you, Papa. Um, like Emma, I think you have sold me out already. I'm into investment banking, uh, just as Papa introduced me. Um, recently, I've been engaging a lot on conversations on wealth creation and wealth management. Because as a country, if we are thinking about generational wealth, we need to begin very early in life. So that has occupied me for the past 19 years. 
and as a mother, I've also been married for the past 19 years. So it's been some significant years um, over the period for me. What I think about the Ghanaian movie industry now, I'm like Ray mentioned some few points. I believe there has been some significant transformation. I'm in the fifth decade of my life. So I have seen stories where everything bordered on witchcraft, a lot bordered on extreme poverty, a lot bordered on an impressive setup, etc., etc. But when you compare to what we see now on our screens, I believe we have come a long way where local content is concerned. Thank you. Wonderful. Jabril. Yeah, I am Jibril with NCCE, and um, NCCE is a constitutional creation by an Act of Parliament, Act 452, um, 1993, Article 231. That is where you find NCCE. And um, what NCCE does is to educate Ghanaians on their civic rights and responsibilities. So. Rightly, as we saw in the movie, we saw that a child's right was abused because the constitution, you know, gives them that right to education per um, chapter 5 of the constitution. So, we saw clearly that the right of a child is being abused. And uh, I would say that these are the kind of movies that actually touches on the very core principles of what NCC is all about. So I would want to encourage um, the movie producers and directors to actually be doing movies of this nature to, as it were, help NCCE educate the citizens, you know, with some sort of uh, flexibility because it's becoming hard when we do not have these kind of movies, I mean, you know, portraying the very attitudes that are fighting against what we ought to achieve. So I would want to end here. Now I like I like your summary. It's it's clear you've quickly stated what the movie industry should be doing to push the mandate of NCCE. So what is your mandate clearly? At? What are your tenets of existence? And give us examples of how filmmakers like Mark, like Kwame and a few others here can be intentional about ensure that we have more active and more patriotic citizens. Yeah, so um, at the mandate of NCC is um, purely to create and sustain awareness of a constitutional democracy for the achievement of political, economic and social stability within the country through civic education. So, all activities that are geared towards the sustenance of the constitutional democracy that we are enjoying, NCC really appreciates that, and that is the reason, the more reason why every election is of a high paramount to NCC, because without stability within the political terrain, we cannot all be here and be discussing and doing what we are doing today. And that will also affect the economic stability and all that. So, NCC, if I want to cast our mind back, we can look at areas um, in the former where we used to have the movies of Osofo Dazi, which, you know, um, pushes the people to demand accountability from bearers and that is what NCC is still doing within the co communities of the country we actually ensure that the citizens are aware of their rights and that they have to demand you know um, responsibilities or ensure that the duty bearers are held accountable to for the reasons for which they were put in the offices 
That is why we even have decentralization as we see and um, being practiced. That's why we are going to have even district level elections right coming Tuesday. That is bringing the constitutional democracy to the doorsteps of every Ghanaian. So movies of this nature really push the agenda of NCC to ensure that the mandate as we are looking for is well achieved. Because without political stability, we cannot be here and discussing what we are doing here. And so, you know, we used to have movies like uh, the Rwandan genocide, that occasion somewhere April 7, 1994. Those are the movies that um, from the inception of the constitution from 1993, we've been pushing this agenda and showing these movies to people within the communities since those days that NCC was very popular on cinema vans that went to the villages to showcase what is actually happening. And then with that, that we have been doing, we, we used to do even education on HIV those days and the use of condoms, if you could remember that in a way to reduce the spread of HIV virus from those days up to now. And so we are proud we have achieved that height. So we want to encourage still movies of this nature to ensure that the mandate as I have indicated here is well achieved and supported by all and sundry. Dr. Susie, um, as an intellectual and a high achiever, what additional benefit would you like to see in movies and, and in the movie space or in cinema? And how do you think we can make the industry bigger and more appealing to you and your peers? Thank you very much, um, Papa. I watch... Personally, I watch movies for a number of reasons. One for me is recreation, but a bigger interest for me is education. I want to watch a movie and walk away with some significant learning that I can hinge on for transformation. So when it comes to the cinema, what I envisage is some serious attempt or intentional attempt to research that the movie is not just born out of mere passion to produce something but there's an objective for an output that can transform society in terms of education an example is the movie that we watched before this uh, panel discussion on the lessons we have guided on the rights of the child. So beyond the concept of socialization where we are all out here within a certain community meeting new people to socialize, I'm looking at that intention of education, in the midst of education, in the midst of entertainment as well. So when it comes to moving, I'm looking for rich content that will nourish my mind, that will also help me to yearn to look forward to watching similar production. So research um, is very critical for me. Rich content is also very, very critical for me. And working away with some education is also very important for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Raymond, as a member of Global Group, committed to deploying volunteers to rural groups and championing change and reshaping the African narrative, what are your expectations of those in the movie industry? Thank you very much. My expectations are that movie makers, actors, and all the players in the movie industry will be more intentional. Intentional in addressing the ills we see in society to entertain, to educate, but most importantly, to let us be up and living to what we are supposed to be doing as citizens. It's rather unfortunate that sometimes when you want a movie that you can use to educate your children or your peers about what should not be, sometimes it becomes very difficult because there's so many of them, and I call it scarcity in the midst of abundance. 
So there are so many movies, and yet you want a particular movie that will address a particular need, or even to use in training, it becomes a challenge. The other thing is that there are very great things happening, but the narrative doesn't get heard by the right people. And so, coming to what we do in Co Africa, we started having a conversation around the potential of the African youth. And if you check the statistics all over the world, Africa is the new frontier in terms of our natural resources, human resources, population growth, and all of that. Everyone is coming towards this continent. And not all who are coming to us are coming with the right reasons. And so our movie producers and actors and all the players in the industry must have this singular objective to market us properly, profitably, and sustainably. And so we ensure this happens by decentralizing the way we engage in solving community problems. Now, I always use this example that communities keep evolving and communities have long been in existence before any help from outside ever arrived. And they will long continue to be in existence after we have come to do whatever we want to do with that community. The communities are still going to be there. And so as we go into the communities and look for these stories, we should also look at how we preserve the stories and also preserve the sanctity and dignity of the communities. Definitely, there will be some social ills that we can address, and there are some good things we can also highlight. We call that the positive deviance that we find in the community. We need to highlight that. And we also need to name and shame the wrong that is happening. All along, we hear that, oh, let me use a local language, and sometimes elderly people commit bad things. And then when you want to deal with it, then there are so many ways of, let's talk behind closed doors and all of that. Movies are the best ways to express some of these things. And right is right, even when no one is doing it. And wrong is wrong, even when everybody is involved in it. And so we try to ensure that the young people that are coming can have good templates of development or what society really stands for. And so when our volunteers go into the communities, we tell them that you have eyes, but you cannot see. Go into the community, not like an expert, but someone who is willing to listen, to observe, to taste, to live like them, while at the same time earning their trust. So with that, you can help bring about the change we are looking for. And that's exactly what we expect the movies to do. And we are very open to collaborate with movie makers to understand the African narrative, to know that there's a bombardment of all kinds of things at us. But at the same time, the authenticity with which we've come this far should be able to take us to wherever we want to go. And so I expect that the collaboration goes on. After this conversation, let's talk some more. Get to know our philosophy and how we engage in communities. I will share the stories of what young people have done, young people are doing, and young people want to do. And like Otuko know, young people are looking for a place to express what they already have within them. Some of them, their future is so bright that the elderly people will need sunglasses to see it. And so we need to understand them and we need to give them the opportunity to make their own mistakes and learn. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. If you know your future is so bright, the elderly will need sunglasses. Let me hear an amen. There we go. All right, Emma Brenya, founder of the Brand Conference, such a fascinating concept. What are your thoughts on national branding and what is the role of the movie industry and shaping, building, and optimizing the brand that Ghana has. Um, thank you, Papa. So I, I, I would like to talk in very lay English so that we'll all understand. So national branding is more to do with the strategies that a country uses to convey an image to other countries. It's as simple as that, how people see us. So it's, it's more to do with showing off what we've got, you know. And uh, our brother who did a movie was saying something like, it's important to sell our identity. So somebody will ask, so what is our identity? So I think I read about something and it's more to do with, you know, those who colonized us, um, one way to 
infuse negativity into Africans was through filming. So they showed us movies to let us know how bad we were. I'm trying to use very lay English. How bad we are. How unintelligent we are. How, why, the reasons why they should colonize us. The reasons why we should be slaves. And one of the ways they did that was through movies. So that was going on till Kwame Nkrumah became the president. And what happened was that he wanted to change the narrative. So what he did was to take some of the youth, take some of the filmmakers outside to go and learn how to make great movies, come back, come and make movies that tells of our story. So this is a little bit of our history. So some way, somehow, our mindset has been tampered with. So in everything that we do, we don't even see ourselves as there. Did you know that we were the first people to, to create VHS, that's the cassettes, Ghana was. Someone should correct me if I'm wrong, but apparently you were the first to come up with VHS. And one way or the other, mindsets. We couldn't, by now we should, I'm sure we should have been the pioneers in the, in the, in the movie industry, but what happened? Our mind was worked on so much, we began to fight ourselves. We couldn't even do things on ourselves. So Kwame Nkrumah unfortunately died. And after that, it's been from one story to the other. Today movies are good, tomorrow they are something else. So yes, national branding through movies you know, people will pay any amount for any form of entertainment. And one of the ways is movie. And US, I've forgotten the figure, but as of last year, if Hollywood is a whole nation, they, they, I think that their GDP, it could be a whole, they made so much money. You understand? And it is a very lucrative, it is a very good arena to portray Ghana to portray what we truly are, what is our identity, who we are. So this movie clearly tells you that we still have mindset issues. We still need to move away from what they have told us we are. We, we need to portray ourselves as what we are. So movies like uh, The Lion, The Woman King, and uh, Black Panther, I mean, I mean, you, you could tell they, are, they were trying to, to, to portray us in it. That is who we are, actually. We are strong. We are intelligent. In fact, we are everything. And, you know, people, you know, people only fight those that have so much. Why would they, I mean, why would we be fought? It's because we have so much. And our identity has been tampered with so much that we don't even know who we are. As an individual, I mean, everyone sitting here, if I should call someone now, tell me who you are. I'm sure you will tell me, oh, my daddy says I am, my friends says I am. You cannot really tell who you are. So that is personal brand, even starting from personal brand. Then it goes into your career. Then it goes into your marriage. It goes into raising your children. So it's a whole cycle. So, I mean, national branding is not just yeah, okay, how we look. It's we as individuals, how do we even think of ourselves? So even portraying the films we do, the quality of the films, and the things we portray to the other countries. So, I mean, this is the little I'll say concerning national branding. This is Thank super you. exciting, super exciting. And um, there's a concept that some of us have been discussing for a while called the G-Wave, uh, which basically means the Ghana Wave. And if you want to have any idea about it, I'm sure some of you have heard about the K-Wave. This was the whole intentional wave that took over the world where Koreans started pushing their movies, their fashion, their, the, the sitcoms, and till so today. How many, how many people here watch uh, Korean movies? Let me see by hand. See, see? I wish we could go to other countries and also say, how many people watch Ghanaian movies? And everybody will have their hands up. So the movement has started, and I hope that all of you understand that you're part of that movement. 
and um, yes, the movie industry has a, a, a huge role to play. So Emma, from you to this side, because we have so many activities uh, moving forward, your last few words to the movie industry, to the audience here, and to yourself. How should we move forward? So from Emma, Papa Ray, Dr. Susie, Jabril. I personally think that we should, um, money should be pumped in this industry. Because like I said, anything that, that has got to do with entertainment, people are ready to do anything to go watch, to, 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 to pay for. So I don't know um, what the government is doing for this um, industry, but I think more money should be pumped into this. We should allow more investors to come in concerning this. It will create more job opportunities when they come, or if we can, you know. And I think we should, we should go out there and learn more on how to produce quality movies. Either it is done here, you know, by so doing, more jobs are created. You know, film industry is also a job. Let's not see it as only lawyer, being a lawyer or a doctor or whatever is the only job. But conveying our nation to other countries, movie, cinema is one of the top ways. I can assure you of that. And once it's a good movie, anyone will, will want to watch it. Even if it's not paid, it's for free. And anyone would want to pay for it once it's entertaining. So I think we should be more creative and innovative in how we portray ourselves. And like I said, if we understand where we are coming from, let's try and change the narrative, okay, of, of who we are as Ghana and even Africa in a whole. And then portray ourselves in the best possible way. Let's not just get up and say, oh, let me just do movie. Because we all know doing movie is very difficult. The cast, the, the, the money that goes into it is not funny. So what we try to do is to do, put, I mean, something together and we just portray something anyhow. So I, I believe the regulators should also, if they can help us to set up, if they can help us to set up so that they regulate some of these movies that goes out there. But bottom line is, we need to portray ourselves better. And by so doing, our identity or who people think we are as Africans will be changed. Thank you. Spe speaking about support from people out there, I, I want to give a big up to Bitter Malt for being our sponsors for drinks. And uh, I definitely want to give a shout out to National Film Authority They've been very supportive. Um, they supported in this event. And uh, they are the regulators, by the way, uh, talking about regulators. So at least that's the one industry I can say that uh, the regulators are actually helping. And I'm hoping that all other regulators will learn from them and support. So we, we don't kill businesses, but we rather encourage businesses to do well. So Sorry, I just wanted to I, I would want to there. add one more. And for the youth, I can see a lot of young ones here. I believe if you believe in in the movie or the cinema industry, I mean this industry, I think some of you can start some courses around it. And if you really, it has touched your heart, or you want to know, or you want to change how people see us, how you are treated, I'm sure a lot of you don't like how you are treated, or how you think people perceive us. I think you should move more into that industry. And then I'm sure gradually Ghana will become, or Africa will become, um, the top of town. Thank you Thank very you. much. Papa Ray? Thank you. I would like to just say things in two parts. The first part is to congratulate all who are in the industry and doing your very best. You may not be known, you may not be celebrated yet, please don't give up. A lot is done in secret and you only get acknowledged in public when the time is right. So please keep doing what you are doing and for the producers, keep looking up for good talent and keep putting the money in there and your light will shine, I can guarantee you. Now for actors and actresses, please be mindful that when you are discovered, 
you do not create unnecessary competition among yourselves and you do not destroy each other. Please, gratitude is still the best attitude to have. So please be grateful that someone has invested in you and is investing in your talent. And please work at that talent. Talent is just 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. You need to perspire. You need to read more, you need to investigate more and be a better version of yourself. And then to the movie producers, please collaborate among yourselves. We all have competitive advantage as individuals. Let's leverage this strength. And when one producer gets into trouble, all of us are in trouble. And when one producer or one movie gets celebrated, let's all connect to that celebration and support that. And then for something I want to just give as a gift, it's called the Innovators Compass or the Human Centered Design. It's a model for planning and for decision making. It's just five components that helps you to think through any and everything that you are doing, whether you are planning or you are making a decision. Think about the people, think about the observations, the principles, ideas, and experimentation. Time is not here for me to teach you or to take you through it. But it helps you to ensure that every facet of all your constituents or the people that you engage with are taught about as you go into creativity. And to say that when we say a picture is worth a thousand words, I think a movie is worth even more than that because the images that you put together will stay with people for the rest of their lives. A good movie is like a good teacher. You never forget them, no matter how old you, you are. If I should ask you to talk about a teacher that impacted you the most, immediately an image pops into your mind. And that is what a good movie does. And so to actors in the industry, please let's watch out against people that are infiltrating through our ranks and selling all kinds of damage. Let's be mindful. We are gatekeepers. Let's ensure that what holds us together as a nation is our integrity and our sense of nationality and pride. Let's protect that. Let's not sell our birthright. Let's not, for the love of money, do things that are despicable. Let's remember a nation that does not honor God soon find that God is at the center of everything that they do. And let our movies portray that traditionally and internationally and we'll be there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Papa. I'll very briefly just like to touch on classification uh, to the producers. When we list a movie as a movie for kids, let's ensure that the content really are suitable for kids. When we list a movie as a movie for family, let's ensure that it is truly suitable for family, parents, and children. You don't want to begin to watch a family movie with your children and there are scenes that you are struggling to decide whether you should put the TV off or to just let it go. So for me, that is one um, takeaway I want to leave with the producers. And as a parent, the other concern for me is it's the cost of entertainment these days. Very expensive, you want to go to the movies with three children and you are really thinking, is it worth it? So if there are ways of ensuring that, yes, entertainment is for recreation, it's for relaxing the mind, it's for education, etc., etc. You should ensure that it's an avenue that you don't really have to think too much about because you just want to enjoy yourself and relax in a certain way. So anything that can help to reduce the cost, especially in going to the cinema these days, it's something that will be very good for the family. Thank you. That's why it's amazing to come to a page where it's free to watch. Just make sure you support us, you know. Jabril. Yeah, NCC is very particular about the content that we show, you know, in our movies. So, you know, growing up, there used to be some movies where you could see, you know, people smoking. So, but I particularly took interest in you know, like the idea of when the cigarette smoke, you know, is popped through the nose and then the way it comes out, it was very beautiful to my eyes. So I thought, okay, smoking would be good. So, and actually in my community, I used to see people smoking and then I reflect what I saw in the movie and I said, okay, I like the way, you know, the smoke was actually coming through the nostrils. 
and I, I, I liked the way it seemed at the time. So I thought to myself, okay, uh, smoking would be nice, so I would want to practice it and all this kind of stuff. So we want to, NCC want to look at content that, you know, portray much more of positive actions or activities within the movies. You know, you could tell that uh, those that we used to do, watch action movies, you know, with commando, wielding guns and all those kind of stuff. Um, you can easily tell that if those days, if we had guns, with bullet, uh, if somebody's father uh, is having a, a gun with bullet and uh, he has access to it, it will be a different ball game. So we want to see movies that, you know, has more of positive uh, content so that, uh, like the um, doctor said, you know, the classification so that you will know that, okay, this content is good for this. Just as those on YouTube, you know, would attest to the fact that if you want to show certain content, you know, YouTube wouldn't allow. So I think um, we are much more particular about the content that we put out there to help us educate the citizens as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, all panelists. Please, let's give them a round of applause. I'll make uh, remember that we all have a role to play in the movie industry as audience, as directors, as interactors, as producers, as funders. So we should all do our part because if the movie industry grows, Ghana grows. Thank you very much. Have an amazing day. Mr. DJ, give us a as we move on. We'll be showing the movie on Tetequashi very soon.